I'm Amazon John, and I have a message that you may find of value if you're a conscious cultivator of cannabis. How would you like to increase your yield by 6 to 31 percent? Increase the cannabinoid profile 5 to 15 percent, and the terpene, the profile, the richness of those terpenes, by anywhere from 12 to 100 percent. If those numbers seem valuable to you and you're interested in doing it in a conscientious way, then this message may be for you. I've spent the last 23 years in and out of the Amazon rainforest. Plant medicine is what I do. I've researched and found and brought to market a variety of Amazonian plants, medicinal plants, therapeutic plants from the Amazon, formulated those in America, and over the 23 years, we sold a little over $100 million of those products. We formulated by using very specific futuristic technology. We're able to look at uh, botanicals and actually see how they will interface with the human physiology before we do that. And we're able to make specific formulations of uh, percentages of ingredients to affect a variety of different human conditions from the immune system to the endocrine system, uh, just energy levels, detoxification, increasing brain function, all of these sorts of things. So that's my background. And what I've discovered is a whole variety of things that are very specific to plants and our interaction with the plant kingdom. The last three years, I've studied specifically on cannabis as a medicinal plant with the intention of how, as we're having more and more access to cannabis now, and rightfully so, this extraordinary plant, how do we interface with this plant from a cultivation standpoint, give it the nutrient compounds that it needs, create an environment that's specific for cannabis to allow it to express itself at its fullest healing, energetic, and therapeutic value for us, and do that in a conscientious way. There's many growers that are using a variety of techniques, more like big agriculture uh, now. And I'm, if you're one of the conscientious cultivators out there, I think you know what I'm talking about, is really having a relationship with this plant that respects the plant, and yet we want to maximize its fullest potential and, that, and maintain that specific relationship. So, uh, what we've developed here over the period of this last three years is a specific formula. This is a happy tree microbes, we call it, a bioharmonic tonic. It begins with the microbes, and the microbe mix is a mix that's been around in its uh, core form since the 1950s. If you want to read about that, just look up The Old Man and the Secret, and you'll find a very colorful history of how these microbes first came about. And it's actually made, this is not made in a laboratory. We're not taking specific strains in a Petri dish in a laboratory and creating this. This is a lot more organic and a lot more natural than that. And it's microbial mix is a whole series of probiotics and bacteria and fungi uh, that's growing. It's growing in a very uh, lively way, you may say, and over a period of time, over a period of months, it matures and it stabilizes and harmonizes into a specific colony that's got over a thousand different strains of microbes in it. And this specific microbial mix uh, we've been experimenting with with extraordinary uh, results and we look to take that happy tree microbe formula even another step further. And to do that, we've incorporated gemstones and Amazon botanical activators. Uh, the Amazon botanical activators we use are Camu Camu. Camu Camu is a plant that grows in the Amazon floodplain. I have about 23 years of experience with that in the human arena because it increases the activity of neurotransmitters in the brain, it influences mood. It's got a very high concentration of naturally occurring vitamin C and bioflavonoids. And the interesting thing about Camu Camu, from the standpoint of the uh, energetics of the rainforest, is because it lives in that floodplain, uh, the floodwaters come and during the rainy season, they'll rise 30 feet. These plants are completely underwater 
for two months of the year. You would expect that they would die, but they flourish with that. And one of the reasons they do is because what that flood water brings is that extraordinary rich biomass of the Amazon rainforest. 100,000 species of plants growing in the Amazon. And as those plants and trees and bushes mature, their leaves drop into the water, their stems drop in, the trees fall over. All of that is contributing not only the uh, chemistry and the nutritional content of those plants and trees, but it's also contributing the life experience and the information and the plant intelligence. All that's contributed to the floor of the Amazon rainforest, and that's what develops that rich biomass in the Amazon. And when the floodwaters come, it moves that rich biomass around the camu plants. The camu, for their specific life purpose, are able to draw from that rich biomass and concentrate a very specific profile of uh, nutritional compounds, uh, plant intelligence, amino acids into this fruit. When we dry this fruit and grind it into powder, the Camu Camu powder, that's one of the Amazonian botanical activators. Uh, and there's three. The next one would be a maca. Maca is uh, the highest altitude cultivated plant in the world. It's up high in the Andes, 12 to 16,000 feet. But the only other activity that happens up there is mining for minerals very rich mineral content in that soil and because it's a tuber it grows underground as a root uh, it is collecting the soil-based organisms mineral soil-based organisms amino acids and this is used in human field human consumption for uh, enriching the endocrine system for energy for muscle mass muscle tissue body tone so there's a physicality uh, and a high altitude uh, signature on this maca with the soil-based organisms and the minerals coming forward. Uh, the third thing we use is a marapuama. Marapuama, Tycopichon olacoides, grows in Brazil in the plains. Uh, it's a small uh, bush, and as it grows up, it develops this stem, a very, very dense blonde-colored stem that's very rich in essential oils and terpenes. When you crack that stem, you get this huge rush of, of terpenes. So those are the three plants that we grind into powder as the Amazon activator that goes into the happy tree microbes so these microbials can actually feed off of the plant intelligence of the Amazon rainforest and have access to all the uh, nutritional and chemical benefits that I just talked about. And that all gets transferred to the microbes, so they have something to digest, something that they're uh, uh, being imprinted with uh, from the richest living source of plant concentration on Earth. And so this is something I think is important that the cannabis have access to so that the cannabis for its life purpose can explore and fill out and contribute and uh, express itself to its maximum therapeutic um, advantage. Uh, what this does when you introduce this into the soil is actually create a microbiological activity. You're introducing this microbiological colony uh, into the soil such that you're getting better uh, nutrient uptake, nutrient recycling, the plants are able to uptake uh, not only the, uh, we've measured uh, like calcium uptake, for example, 12%. So you're getting not only the, the uptake in material for strong stems, strong branches, but you're getting the nitrogen, the phosphorus, all the mineral uptake is significantly uh, enhanced. Um, now the next thing we do is to imprint this with uh, gemstones. I spent several years uh, early in my career just dealing with stones. I was a treasure hunter and I dealt with a lot of gemstones out of Brazil and Argentina. And when you think about gemstones, I think one of the important considerations are the, the energetic qualities of the stones. For example, a quartz crystal, everybody knows quartz crystal. Uh, one of the fascinating things about a quartz is that it replicates a silicon dioxide and it replicates uh, exactly, that matrix replicates perfectly as it grows. And because of that perfect replication in the matrix, 
it was used, it can actually receive and transmit wave form. And it was used in the original transistor radios, which they even call crystal sets, because it can receive and transmit uh, wave form. So the wave form that we have around us today, which may not be helpful to us, is coming from cell phones, it's coming from computers, it's coming from cell towers, all this electromagnetic pollution that's being put out, and a lot of it's uh, extra low frequency, which means it's, it's such a frequency and a wave pattern that will actually pass right through us as mass. It just uninterrupted, it passes right through us and through the plants, and that can be very uh, disturbing to our bodies at a cellular level, and we're beginning to see some of the negative effects of that, but it's also disturbing to the plants. So what we want to do with the gemstones, we have amethyst, uh, chrysoprase, and opalite are the three stones of the many stones that, that I checked using this futuristic technology that uh, the same people, the same resources, the same talent that I used for the nutritional compounds we're using with this material here, specific to cannabis. Everything we're doing is very specific to the cannabis plant. And what we find is when you're able to neutralize a lot of that electromagnetic uh, frequency coming through, you create a harmonic field where this plant can grow freely, express itself better. And so we call it the bioharmonic tonic. Bio being the biological activity of the microbials that are going into the soil, creating that nutrient cycling for better uptake of of nutrients you can use less uh, fertilizers uh, and in fact if you're over fertilizing or or whatever soil amendments you're working with some people experience a soil lock uh, where you get the carbon bonds in there it actually breaks down the carbon bonds so things can begin to uptake again and and you revitalize your your soil so the benefits of this are, are really twofold. One, create that very active uh, microbiological activity in the soil. So the roots grow, the plant can uptake nutrient matter, uh, maintain its health and its vigor. And uh, as we see, I mean, you get a yield that's anywhere from six to 31% uh, more yield. Uh, the, the cannabinoid content, five to 15% increase, terpenes, anywhere from 12 to 100% increase in terpene profiles. So the idea is to, to get a, a harmonic plant because we're going to integrate this plant into our physiology one way or another. So we want to have the best harmonic experience for the consumer. So when we create a plant that's got a better experience for the consumer and we're getting better yield, richer terpene profiles, richer cannabinoid profiles, and we're doing that all in a uh, sustainable and conscientious way, that's what this is about. So I encourage you, if this sounds of interest to you, if this resonates with you in any way, I encourage you to give this a try, and if you're not happy with it, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Give it a go. Thanks for listening.